What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Stephanie and you are watching New Light Reptiles. Today we are going to talk all about pet sticks. Okay, not really, but if you can see here, this crazy looking creature. They are called Cuban false chameleons and today I'm going to talk about this underrated amazing reptile. This girl right here is known as Penelope and I'm probably not going to keep her out for the whole video. They do tend to get a bit stressed out when it comes to handling. As you can see, her color is getting a little bit darker. She doesn't really love to be handled, but we'll let her hang out for a little bit. Not only are these guys misleading in their appearance, the way that they blend in with the branches around them, but also their name, Cuban False Chameleon. They're not actually chameleons. These guys are actually in the anole family, and they are also known as a western bearded anole. They get their name as Cuban false chameleon because they're found in Cuba, and also because like chameleons, they have independently moving eyeballs. In the wild, they will be found camouflaged and perched on branches in Cuba. They are a relatively slow moving, slightly more calm species. And I just find these guys to be a pretty slept on, underrated reptile um, in the reptile keeping pet community. I think they make amazing pets because of their very calm, docile demeanor. They're also normally very good eaters and they're just completely interesting and unique and not something you see very often. Another thing I really like about these guys is that they're also diurnal, meaning that they are awake during the day and sleep at night, so you will see them out and about during the daytime. And although it's not ideal for... I felt like I just got peed on. Okay, I definitely got pooed on there and I went ahead and put Penelope back into her enclosure. Um, she was showing me signs of being a little bit stressed out and that is not at all what we wanna do with our animals. So Penelope is back home. Um, I have poop on me, but that's okay. We're not gonna let it prevent us from continuing this video. So let's carry on. All right, so let's get into the care requirements of these guys. Starting out with enclosure, these guys are arboreal, so they're gonna need something with more height than width. So I've got Penelope over here in the Dubia 18 by 24 by 36 arboreal enclosure. That's perfect for one of these guys. The minimum requirement for an enclosure is going to be 18 by 18 by 36. Of course, bigger the better. It is also important to note that these guys should not be cohabbed. There can be instances of aggression, so it's better to just house them alone. They are solitary animals. And also when it comes to enclosure, you want to make sure that you're looking at something that is not only going to have good ventilation, but also hold in quite a bit of humidity as well. So something like Penelope's is made out of completely all PVC, um, and that is really good for retaining humidity, but it does have a mesh screen top to allow for that ventilation. Next up, we need to talk about lighting. These guys do require bright lighting during the day to maintain that healthy circadian rhythm. So, they do need to be provided an overhead heat source as well as a linear UVB. It is always important to check the brand of UVB that you're using to see what UVB is going to be best for your species and also dependent on the distance from the basking spot. Um, the one that I'm using for Penelope is the Arcadia Shade Dweller. I would definitely recommend that. Anything really from Arcadia and Reptisun is going to be a good quality product. For Cuban false chameleons, the Arcadia Shade Dweller or Forest is a good option, as well as the Reptisun 5.0. For a basking and heat source, I definitely recommend a halogen bulb. I can't be specific on what wattage to use because it depends on so many variables 
such as what enclosure you're using, how big it is, the temperature of your house, etc. So you'll need to kind of play around with that yourself. However, the temperatures that they need to have is going to be a 90 degree basking spot. So that basking spot is going to be higher up because it's an arboreal enclosure and they do like to climb. And the cool side would obviously be on the bottom of the enclosure. You'll want to aim for that cool side to be around 72 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Nighttime temps can be anywhere from 65 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So for her, I just turn the lights off at night and she's good to go. My house generally stays around 68 degrees, which is perfect for her at nighttime. She doesn't need any additional heat source at night. And we also want it to be completely dark at night as well to maintain that healthy circadian rhythm. One of the best tools to maintain and check on the temperatures in your enclosure is to use an infrared heat gun. Um, I have these linked on my Amazon storefront, which I'll also put in the notes below. Um, but this is something that every reptile keeper definitely needs to have. All right, now we need to talk humidity. Human false chameleons do need a rather high humidity about 80% during the day. However, it can drop as low as 40% during the day, but they also really need a spike at night all the way up to 100% humidity. A good way to be able to maintain this is to either install a misting system, which will definitely make your life a bit easier, or you can just spray the enclosure multiple times a day. Um, I typically do a very, very, very good spray at night to really spike that humidity. And then I spray again in the morning and usually the afternoon. Now I do live in a really dry climate, so I'm finding the need to spray more often. But once again, it's going to vary on so many things for you, including your climate, your enclosure, etc. All right, next up, substrate. So because Cuban false chameleons generally spend most of their time up in the branches, you would assume that substrate is probably not super important for them. However, using a proper substrate to maintain humidity levels is really important. I really like to use a combination of about 60% organic topsoil mixed with 40% coconut fiber. I feel like this retains the humidity well and also allows for my bioactive setup as well. I like to use live plants and this just tends to work well. However, there are other options. You can use something like Repti Soil or the BioDudes Terrafauna is also a great choice. As for decor and enrichment, they're going to need lots and lots of branches and things to climb on, as well as some coverage from foliage as well. So you can use live plants. Just make sure you're doing your research and finding plants that are safe for your reptile. However, fake plants work great as well. In a high humidity climate, I do recommend steering away from silk plants as they can harbor a little bit of bacteria, but plastic plants are perfectly fine. You can typically find all those branches and climbing opportunities at your local reptile shop. Um, it does tend to get pretty pricey. So what I do is I just find branches outside and disinfect them by either putting them in the oven for 200 degrees for 30 minutes to kill everything off of it. Or if the branch is too big to put in my oven, then I will soak it in my bathtub with scalding hot water and white vinegar. It's also important to note for that if you are choosing to find your own wood from outside, steer away from pine and cedar as these woods can be toxic to your pet. Now that we've established the enclosure, we can go ahead and talk about diet, which is actually pretty interesting and unique for these guys. So in the wild, they strictly eat just snails and slugs. They have jaws and a tongue that has been anatomically adapted to crush and eat these things and it is important that we still provide some snails for them in captivity. Um, you can purchase something like canna snails on Amazon. Um, I believe they're made by Zoomed and then supplementing with live insect feeders as well. They are great eaters in my experience anyways 
and I've had no problem with Penelope taking insects whatsoever. She loves dubia roaches, she loves crickets, she loves superworms, but there are also many other options you can use for them as well, such as silkworms, occasional mealworms, hornworms, and black soldier fly larvae. The key to this is really just to provide variety so they're getting all that well-rounded nutrition that they need. Also, these feeders need to be dusted with something like a the Rapashi Calcium Low D. This supplement is a great combo of calcium and a multivitamin. As for water, these guys really will mostly only drink moving water. So typically when you're spraying the enclosure, they will drink the water that they see dripping off of plants or the enclosure wall. Penelope will honestly drink right from my sprayer nozzle. Um, so I always try to offer her some water when I am misting and she does tend to drink quite a bit of water. However, it's also a good idea to always provide that consistent source of water. Um, you can do something like a dripper, which is what typically people will use for chameleons. Um, you can also just do a, a ledge, like a feeding ledge that you use for crested geckos and do a cup of water there. Um, there's also various different water features and drippers that you can install in your enclosure as well, but just making sure that they have that is obviously a no-brainer and essential to your reptile's health. All right, guys, well, that's all that I have for you today about the amazing Cuban false chameleon. Hopefully you guys found this entertaining. It would be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button and the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today and leave a comment below if you would ever consider keeping one of these guys as a pet for yourself. Until next week, happy reptile keeping.